If we look at the anatomy of the ulnar nerve, we'll see that it's formed as it comes out of the neck from the nerve roots of C7, C8, and T1. Basically, it forms and it comes together here, part of the brachial plexus, basically goes down the arm here, and we'll basically go into what we call the cubital tunnel, and it'll pass underneath what we call the flexor carpi ulnaris, and pass down until we get to the wrist, and we'll go into the tunnel of Galen, which is basically formed from uh, the pisiform and the hamate bone. If we have some kind of a restriction in that nerve or compression, we could actually get shoulder pain, neck pain, elbow pain, uh, a problem with the wrist, and we'll probably notice that we can have a sensory distribution if a sensory part of that nerve is compressed, where the little finger and the finger next to it starts to get numb or we get altered sensation. We also may find that we have problems in terms of bringing those fingers in, so if we're trying to open a jar or screw something off, we're going to have a problem with that area there. So, if we look at that, we say, these fingers are affected, ulnar nerve. We start getting into these three fingers, we're thinking, ah, more medial nerve, median nerve, something like that. In terms of clinical significance, as I mentioned, you can get shoulder, elbow, or wrist problems when compression of the ulnar nerve. Now, this can be either sensory or motor, so we could have problems in terms of our ability to grasp something, and the more compression we get on the nerve, the more that ability is going to be effective to the point where we start to actually get what's called denervation of the nerve, where sometimes the nerve will actually go into spastic reactions that comes in. Now, this is the second most common entrapped or compressed nerve in the upper extremity, the first being the median nerve. People will get problems with this if you're a student and you're sitting on a desk and you've got your elbow down for a long time. Um, I've actually had a little bit of this myself when I've been doing long distance cycling. When I've been training for some, some races and I had my hands on the basically on the bars here, and all of a sudden I started noticing I get a little bit of numbness in these fingers, I'd have to start shaking it out, shaking it out, and it'd be exactly in that distribution. So I know that I have basically cyclist palsy, essentially. So in terms of the areas there, being aware of it, the distribution and the exact structures that the nerve is going into is what's going to be affected, and it can vary greatly between different people. Hi there, it's Dr. Evangelos Milonas at Kinetic Health. Today we're going to discuss ulnar nerve flossing and tensioning exercises. Our goal is to make sure that the nerve is being pulled back and forth, that you're creating tension and sliding in different directions. So starting out, we're going to have the arm bent, palm facing you. You want to grab these two fingers. You're slowly going to pull it through and then bring the head down. You want to repeat this exercise about five to ten times and make sure you're tensioning and flossing the nerve. So once again, we're going to bring it down and back. The second variation of this same idea, except we're going to bring the arm forward, and then we're slowly going to bring our head back. So starting once again like this, grabbing the two fingers, stretching the arm forward, and bringing the head back. And the goal is flossing and tensioning, making sure that nerve is being pulled in different directions so that it's gliding back and forth. Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm going to be, going to be showing you a few more exercises that help to tension and floss the ulnar nerve. So the first one is to take your hand out to the side and we're going to bring the palm in and bring it snug against your ear. So you want to keep the crease of your wrist up against your head and then you can also add a bit of a stretch in there as well and then taking it away. So this exercise you can repeat up to five times on the affected side or if you're feeling it on both sides you can do it on both sides as well. There we go, flossing effects of the ulnar nerve. So, what you do, you take both hands, turning upside down, you're going to create a mask on your face with your hands nice and flush against your face. And from here, you can then tilt. And you want to tilt your whole body with your elbow pointing straight to the ceiling if you can, to both sides. And repeating this about 10 times to either side. So you should feel a good stretch. And that's another great exercise. There's, there's a few correlations between some of the movements in Tai Chi and flossing different nerves. There's a motion in Tai Chi in one of the forms where you take your hand out and over. And if we just repeat this, this is a great way to actually mobilize tension and floss the ulnar nerve. So what we do is you kind of just push out like this and really stretch your fingers out, bring it in, take it over, and, and as you start to go forward here, start to bring your hand up a little bit like that. There we go. Straight out. Probably do this, oh, 
10, 15 times, somewhere in that vicinity. It's a great way of mobilizing the ulnar nerve. So this next exercise that we're going to do is called the waiter's plate exercise. And this one also challenges your coordination as well as working on the ulnar nerve. So you're going to start with a plate in your hand, uh, palm facing up, and then you're going to take it down, under, and around, and then back to the starting position. So this exercise you can also repeat five to ten times. It may take a little while to get the hang of it, but it is, is important to not overstress the nerve and to do these exercises only every other day, not every day, because you don't want to overwork the nerve. So here it is again. You can take the plate under, bring it round and over, and back to your starting position. Evangelist, would you like to have a try? Sure. My wrists aren't as flexible here as Sam, so I'll give it a shot. Whoa, gotta move my whole body into this. Oppa! Oh, not again!